Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video will cover the electronics and the lighting of the Cliff Project, which is the third segment. If you uh, are new to the channel, um, welcome. Uh, but you will find the previous two videos, this is the back finger, the previous two videos very helpful. And there is a work in progress uh, video series as well. And I've created a playlist in the um, channel so that you can sort of see it from its conception to this uh, final stage. Uh, so um, what I want to do before I show you the electronics is just share a couple insights uh, that I learned during this journey. Um, and there are many aspects of the lighting that I investigated and learned uh, that are outside of this scope. But you could achieve many, many of these effects um, solely by learning some of the basics. And uh, when I started, I decided to, um, oh, I could just use the calculators online to con you know, calculate what resistor I needed and you know, all of that stuff. And really, that was a big mistake. Um, I think going back and doing the math and seeing all of the, the, the formulas, and they're called formulas, but they're not, it's not very difficult. Um, so if you're math phobic, I don't want you to think this is uh, terribly difficult, but seeing those really helps you to track down all of the aspects of what you need, where, and um, why they're important, um, rather than just having a number and just saying, I don't know why that number's there, but I'm gonna follow it. It's easy to make mistakes, and I learned a couple things um, when I went back and did the math that um, were really important, actually, both for maximizing the output of my lights and for making sure there wasn't a problem down the road. So a quick sum of some of the things I would look into is um, Ohm's Law, um, which allows you to calculate the um, voltage and the amps and the um, resistor. Um, the uh, Calculating the wattage for the resistors that you're going to need so they don't overheat. Um, understanding when you put resistors in parallel, how that changes their resistance value as well as their wattage rating, which is very important, especially if you don't have the right resistors that you need. I had a whole box of resistors that I had purchased way back at the beginning, um, but I needed um, quite a few that were outside of the range that I had on hand, but by understanding how you can manipulate them, um, and in fact that that was really important actually to give me some advantage for the wattages I need, um, that really gives you some flexibility. Um, and um, understanding how the voltage uh, drop occurs, um, whether you're running things in parallel or series, and knowing then um, what kinds that's going to affect what kind of resistors you need and um, the amount of power that you need. So. Um, I recommend that you go down that journey, um, spend it a couple days. I spent about six hours um, looking those over and crunching numbers on calculator and uh, doing it over and over in a variety of ways, double checking, watching your units. And uh, you know, in the end, I think it was really fruitful. So um, that's just a, a little suggestion if you wanna embark upon something like this, um, check them out. Um, and a second, my biggest tip here is, my second biggest, yeah, is that um, do a schematic of your entire system and label every wire uh, carefully. Um, I, you know, when I uh, soldered my circuit board, which I'll show you in a minute, you know, I did write down with a super sharpie, you know, well, what, w this is going to be where the switch goes because I planned out where I was going to solder everything before I began. And I, that was helpful to know, you know, well, these wires are connect connected to the flicker bulbs. Um, these are connected to the warm lights. These are connected to the waterfall. Even those labels, however, were not quite enough. And then after I had bundled all the wires together and put them in there and that towards the end when I realized I needed to make some changes, whoa, sifting through that wire bundle, not fun, uh, not fun. So if I had known beforehand, I had drawn where every wire was going, labeled those wires coming into the box, labeled my circuit board a little bit more uh, deep with a little more detail, it would have saved me probably five hours plus hunting down things and trying to figure out what I needed to change and where the hell it goes. So um, those are two really important tips. I won't forget those on the next project and hopefully you'll remember them on your first project um, as this was my first project. So uh, lots to learn there. So um, that's a bit for the intro. Um, we should get over there and take a look at it and hopefully I'll be able to um, give you some sense of how the whole system works and um, all the different effects that it produces. So here you can see the um, entrance and the passageway and a little clip of the lava. We'll talk about that later. Um, and this is the uh, box down here or the compartment that controls all of the lighting. I built a false face for it. I've showed that before, um, but I just wanted to talk very briefly about the false face. 
in the sense that um, I noticed as I've been working with it, and I have been pulling it out, putting it back in, pulling it out, putting it back in, um, partly to, to abuse it a little bit, actually, so that I could monitor it for chipping. Um, there were a, a couple small chips that had appeared, um, and so I've touched those up. Um, I haven't seen too many appear. Um, and then I went in and I did a, a very heavy gloss coat over all the areas around this, and then a matte coat to um, dull that down and seal it. So I'm hoping that's gonna add a little durability um, so that it would prevent chipping down the road. But should a very, very small chip occur, um, that could be just touched up with a little, you know, off-white sort of tannish paint, and that should knock it back down. Um, and that is my only real concern with the door. Um, you know, I want it to look good down the road, um, but I found that it seems to be relatively real resilient. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, to remove the door, uh, I was going to put in some kind of, you know, big handle. But in the end, I've decided to just leave it as, oh, is that sticking out a little bit? So I've been popping it in. There you go. Um, to give it a real firm uh, hit and uh, hopefully that's gonna you know if it doesn't chip when I do that and I've been doing that for weeks um, it should be holding up fine um, so there's a little tiny semi finger hole here and there's a little tiny semi finger hole here and it does stick a little you know it's not a, a loose fit so you got to just give it a little pop and then the door will come away and that will reveal the uh, control system for the electronics. I did go in and give this a paint job so it wouldn't look so uh, uh, foamy and, um, let's just say, unclean. Um, when you want to access the electronics, you pull them out and they sit right on this uh, little lip here. They will not go all the way to the floor as I didn't put in enough wire to do that. Um, I actually was running out of wire late in the game. Hmm. So this is uh, the little shelf, but it actually sits on there quite nicely. Then um, what you can do is lift the lid and that will give you access to all the batteries and uh, all the switches uh, to um, change the effects in all the different parts of the, uh, you know, of the project here. So um, let's zoom in a little bit and I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on here. Um, and uh, hopefully we can uh, make some sense of the gobbledygook that's in here. Um, so first, the uh, box holds all the batteries that are in the uh, that run it. Now there are two battery sets, and I've mentioned this a little bit before, but I'm going to go through it all again um, because it's uh, people may only see this video and not some of the work in progress. Um, so this is a, a 6600 mAh uh, mobile battery power pack. It emits a five volt uh, steady state current at either one amp or there's a two amp plug. I've been running it at the one amp plug, and that seems to be working just fine. Um, there's an on-off switch. You, uh, well, it's not an off switch. It's a little weird. The uh, button turns it on, and the only way to turn it off is to disconnect it from the um, source. Uh, so that is a, it's a strange feature, um, but it detects when there's no draw on it um, after 30 seconds or so. Now you'll see um, the lights light up. Oh boy, it's a little dim here. Let's see if I can, there we go. Oh, that's interesting. It's showing three. I'm a little surprised, actually, because I actually ran it all out last night. Um, as it um, reduces in power, it'll eventually go to zero, and it has an automatic cutoff switch, a low, a low voltage protector, I should say, um, to make sure that it turns off. Um, when you unplug it to turn it off, you can also charge it. Then um, it charges by a, a micro USB plug. And one of the nice things about this, actually, is the cord um, is a micro BSB micro BSB? Hmm. A micro USB on this side. So you can actually just pull the cord out, um, rotate it, you know, and then plug the micro into here and then this into your computer to charge it. I will be supplying to the customer an additional cord, however, so he doesn't actually have to fiddle with this. Um, and this is actually kind of a tight fit and there's not a lot of room to wiggle with it. So much better to just have a separate cord to deal with, but you could do it with a single cord if you wanted to. Then there are um, the two 9-volt batteries, and these are wired in parallel, and they run the uh, waterfall effects, um, and that is based on this board up here. This is a modified board that is supposed to be a, uh, a kit, like an a learner kit for soldering and LEDs um, and basically what it is is it's an arrow uh, setup where you'd put in like a hundred LEDs and then you could adjust it and the arrow would flow across. 
One of the nice things about this, however, is that it's got five basic, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't know, five basic inputs, that's what I should say. Um, and then those are, so you can see here, they're controlled by these uh, transistors here, and there are five of those. Um, this allowed me to jack in five spots into it to control five pairs of lights in the waterfall. I would have liked more in hindsight. Um, would have been nice to have, say, 20. Uh, but um, I don't understand yet enough about resistors, capacitors, um, other kinds of timing chips. There's a 555 under here, but I'm not sure what this chip is doing. Um, and that's just above where I'm at right now. So I decided to just run it with the five. We'll call it good for this. And there's a couple options as well within that um, if you don't like the Cascade. So that's what's going on here, basically, in a, in a big overview. Um, this is the uh, board that controls all the other basic lights in it, um, the minims, which are programmable LEDs. I'm not going to get into that in this video. Um, but also, um, so those are the lights in the uh, caves, in the passageway, as well as a set of additional lights for the waterfall. And these are the switches that will control all of those effects. And so you can switch them whichever effects you want, and then you can put the uh, battery, tuck battery back in here, close this all up, stick it back in here, and you'll have the effects uh, running that way. Now, um, a quick mention about the lifespan of the batteries, and I will show you that in a little bit. Um, oh, let's see here, one amp. I've been running it on the one amp. I don't know if it needs the two amp. doesn't seem like it does. Um, and I have checked the um, heat output of this, and it seems like everything's going to run cool enough inside this box. It'll be all right. Um, this is, uh, this should probably give, um, about four to five hours of output, I would expect, um, because it's pulling about an amp off of it, say 6,600 moss. So, you know, an amp should last in theory up to six hours. Um, it may not last quite that long. I did leave it on by accident last night, overnight. I was trying to see how long it was going to run. And, uh, when I came back this morning, um, it was turned off. I assume it hit its low voltage and shut itself off. Mm, so I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> and um, the two um, uh, nine volts, um, because they're, I put them in parallel, so you get an extra draw off of them because it's a pretty heavy draw for a nine volt battery. Um, and those, I think, will give their peak performance for only about an hour. After that, they will drop off, but I discovered this morning they were still producing light. Even at their low voltage, they're reading about 7.5 volts, basically. Um, so they're not happy batteries, but they still give a little bit of light, which is a nice um, adjunct to the basic lights. And I'll show you all of that in a few minutes when we look at the actual waterfall itself. But I just wanted to give a sense of how much time you're going to get out of the batteries in general um, for gameplay or display or something like that. So before we get out of here, I wanted to just talk briefly about some of the changes that I made. And in fact, I'm going to um, change the camera angle just a little bit so we can see this a little bit closer. All right. So very briefly, I just wanted to mention I had had a gobbledygook of resistors in here and I had um, coated them all in a, a liquid insulator and blah, 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 blah. And what I discovered after doing my math, 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 is that actually I had way too many and I could get a brighter effect if I took some of them out. So what I ended up doing is ripping all of those back out, um, rewiring it with the uh, proper set of resistors, and then I actually finally got some uh, shrink tubing and I shrink tubed all of this up and now it just looks so much cleaner. Um, I was really happy with that change. Better for the electronics, better for visual, um, and then it's just sort of um, super glue taped in here to hold it all in. Looks a lot cleaner than it did before, and I'm a lot happier about it. One of the things that I discovered, however, is that when I took out those resistors and dropped their resistance value, um, previously they had been um, causing enough of a resistance to shunt some of the power to the main effect, um, so it was doing both on all the time and the cascade, don't know why that was happening, don't understand enough, but once I did that, it actually now was um, f you know, um, doing one or the other, which means I had to replace the switch. If you recall, I had super glued it in place by accident. I had frozen the switch, pried that switch out, put in a new one. Um, this is the new gauge of wire that I purchased, so much easier to strip than this. Um, put in new wire, rewired it to the switch, and um, I don't know if that's always in focus there. And then now you do have the option of going between the two effects. Um, so now all of the switches are functional and they're all labeled for easy use. And then um, one quick change down here. Um, you'll notice uh, maybe here um, I actually put in a jumper. Um, I'm going to uh, 
Uh oh. Well, we'll see. I might have a problem with my battery pack, so we might have to take a break and charge that. Remember, it was out for the whole evening. Uh, anyway, um, so um, here you can see um, I put in a little jumper here to um, skip this resistor as I found I didn't need all of these. Again, do your math. Um, here I wired these in um, in parallel so I could drop the resistance and increase the wattage which I needed because they were getting hot and it made it brighter. And then actually these two resistors in here, they're doing 165 ohms. I only need 50 ohms. This is for the flicker um, uh, lights in the pass way. So I wanted to cut those out and fix those because I've got to fiddle with everything till it's right. And I tried to get in there and I actually broke a wire on the board and had to fix that and decided I'm leaving it. They're bright enough for the effect. So that's the one thing that I didn't change um, in the end. Uh, so um, overall, I'm pretty pleased with how this section came out. Um, I think if I had done a little bit more work up front, I would have had less problems. And lesson learned, um, don't epoxy in your boards until you know everything is exactly the way you want it. Um, I epoxied both of these boards in too early and has been a nightmare getting in there to fix them. In fact, you can see, you know, here I've taken off a wire and, you know, of course here I couldn't unsolder this resistor and can't fix these now. Mm, don't epoxy it in first. All right, so that's um, basically the um, electronics section of the uh, you know, the brain or the, I should say, the heart of the beast. And uh, now we'll take a look at those effects. So I wanted to give you um, a, just a sort of a more panoramic shot of the caves before we come in close to them. Um, so you can see, you know, where they sit in the, the back of the piece. I, I kind of consider this the back. Um, and um, even from this distance with the, um, you know, the lighting that I have on it, you can see, you know, over in the corner that they are lit. Now, one thing I should mention is that you're going to see strobing in the lights. Um, the minims, which are those programmable LEDs that I'm not going to talk about, <laughs> are pulse width modulated, uh, which means their lights are constantly going on and off. So the camera picks that up as a, uh, as a, you know, it, it sees that pulse width more than the naked eye would. So they're, they look totally steady state to the, you know, when you're in person, but they're going to look a little bit um, stroby uh, through the camera. So I was really pleased though at this distance, you know, away from it that you can see the um, lights coming off of it. And uh, that to me was pretty important. And in fact, for these lights, I made a concerted effort um, to brighten them quite a bit um, over the other lights that I had done because I had done them as, um, you know, the second, you know, these were later installations and I had learned throughout um, to, to, that I needed, really, I wanted, that's a better term, to brighten them um, quite a bit from where they had been in the other sections of it. So in any case, um, this gives you a far away look at them and you can see, you know, they, they, you can see the light, which made me really, really happy because um, under normal lighting and uh, gameplay, you're going to be able to see that effect. So um, let's come up close though and I'll show you the different effects that they produce. So I'm going to show you two of the three caves, uh, mainly, mainly the two that have um, something a little bit kind of wonky going on with them. Um, this is the upper left cave, and um, it um, has one of the lights that isn't lit, actually. Um, it's the warm white that would make it a little bit brighter. So this cave's just a hair dimmer than the other when it's in this lighting phase. This is what I call the incandescent phase, which is just a steady state um, whitish light um, coming on. And actually the warm whites give it a slightly more natural color than this one has, but it's still bright enough that you can see it as you saw from the pull away. When you switch the switch for the caves, however, they flip over to a flicker fire effect and that has an orange cast with a little bit of a flicker going on and that represents sort of fires or you know torches inside um, so i've added an extra flicker fire bulb in addition to the minimum to give it a little bit of a brighter effect and the camera does not like focusing on the interior of these um, but at least it gives you a sense of that and so here's a close-up of the bottom left um, 
cave, and this shows you just how a little bit brighter that sort of incandescent look is. Uh, this is what the other cave uh, looks like, the one that I haven't shown, um, and the one that I previously showed is what the flicker fire looks like in the other cave as well. So um, basically, um, you're getting a little piece of each, but um, this cave has a slightly different problem. Instead of being dim, when it goes to the uh, torch effect, if you will, um, the minimum for some reason has a little bit of a problem in its program and I'm not exactly sure why so that every now and then it gives that little flash and uh, the camera may not pick up the color right because of the pulse width modulation but it actually has a little bit of a, of a purple in its flash. Um, boo. Uh, but um, in any case it's, it's something I can't change at this point and um, I, I just have to accept it um, and it you know it almost looks like maybe spells are going off in the interior some kind of magical fight I mean we could come up with a story to explain it but in any case it's it's a small uh, glitch that I, I'm not able to fix at this point and it's something that I'll probably try to uh, manage a little bit better in the future I, I think I've been stressing the minims through some of my work on them and I might have corrupted it um, during that process uh, but in any case you get a sense of of course also the detail in the cave and the texturing of it I really like how the caves came out in terms of their texture and colors um, so overall really really pleased with this side in terms of just those effects so here you get a look at the interior of the passageway um, now the interior of the passageway is lit um, with two effects as I've, I've shown before um, it has this sort of torch light effect and the torch light effect um, is actually a little bit stronger now in the side passageways um, which are a little bit hard to see. You can see the corner. Let's see if I can move the uh, camera a little bit. It's been not liking focusing in here um, because of the corners and the um, various lights. And in fact, I'm going to turn off one of the lights so you can see the colors a little bit better. There we go. So um, the side passageways, I actually had to modify and carve into them with um, to to actually replace the minims again because I think I had messed them up. So that meant um, carving into there and um, pulling out the minims and at the same time I put in another flicker fire bulb to brighten them. So the side passageways actually have a better effect. Um, they're brighter and they are um, a little bit uh, more realistic in terms of the effect that they produce. I'm going to keep sliding and uh, this is the worst focusing I've done in a video in a while but this just doesn't just doesn't like these uh, passageways. Um, it's a little bit awkward for the camera. There we go. Um, again, we're going to see that kind of a strobing effect, so that's a little bit unfortunate. And if I turn off, um, now of course you're going to have some light on in the room, but I think you'll get a sense of the color of it better if I remove that light, and that gives you a little sense of what it looks like. You can also see the interior of the floor. As I mentioned before, I carried that painting in. It's not as clean as it is on the outside of it, but I think it works um, all right. And actually, it's not as visible. I think the camera actually picks it up a little bit better than the eye. Um, so it's not quite as visible as the outside, and so that kind of works as well. The second um, effect for the passageway is the pulsing uh, blue light, and this was um, meant to kind of give it more of a, you know, a, a, an evil or ethereal look. Um, so that gives you a sense of what that looks like, and um, the minims actually have a program to, um, you know, f fade them, but n there's three lights in it, and so those three lights are not timed together. They start together, but they will drift out of sync over time, and I don't have the skills right now to alter that so that they're all synchronous continuously. Um, but it still works, actually. I'm really pleased with how that came out. Um, I think it gives a really nice effect in the interior, and actually it's, it's quite a bit brighter than the torchlight effect. Um, so it, it's, it's a really nice contrast and really breaks up the um, style of the passageway and gives it a whole new look. So here we can see the lava and um, its lighting effect. Now there's a lot to mention about the lava as it has uh, quite a bit going on with it. Um, so right now this is what I call the static state. Now this is running off of both the um, 5 volt uh, battery as well as the 9 volts. But these pair of 9 volts I left on overnight by accident and they're actually as I mentioned before highly drained. 
Now between the two of them, however, even with the drain 9 volts, you still get a really nice lit effect. At least I think so. It was much brighter than I expected with the drained 9 volts. Um, I'm going to take off the 9 volts and show you what it looks like just with the um, oh, clunk clunk just with the 5 volt battery running so you can get a sense of that as well. So if you didn't have any 9 volts, um, this would be the effect that you would have, and um, that's a constant as long as the, um, the, the uh, power bank or whatever it is, mobile power uh, battery pack is running. When, however, you have a fresh 9 volt battery, it's actually a considerable difference. And uh, let me plug in one fresh 9 volt, give you a look at that. Whoops. Urgh. This is a tight 9 volt plug adapter here. There we go. And so you can see really just how powerful that light is. Um, that was the effect I was really going for, and you will get that effect if you leave them all on um, for about an hour. Now, inside, there are two pairs, two pairs, five pairs of really large LEDs um, spaced out to give this effect. Those are a very high drain set of LEDs. They pull one amp all said and done, and that's really hard on the 9 volts. But if you run the second effect, which is the, um, the strobing effect, then what you'll get is you'll get a cascade of the light coming down, and that would run um, quite a bit longer because only two of them are lit at any one time rather than all 10 of the bulbs. The strobing effect is modifiable if I can find my screwdriver, with the little potentiometer that I've shown before. And um, with the adjustment of that, you can go um, as low as it goes. This is as slowest as you can have it. Let it run its course. And then by turning up the uh, potentiometer, you can increase its speed. So you can set that speed to whatever you like that feels a little bit more comfortable. Um, and you can uh, really get it quite fast, even beyond what I think is very appealing. So really, you know, you can have it flowing pretty fast. And then, um, unfortunately, um, you know, the, the highest you can go is this static state, which is probably epileptic-inducing, um, seizure-inducing. So, uh, you know, of course, that's not what I would um, recommend. But this is why I had to put in the switch, because I couldn't get them to stay on all the time, and that was really what I wanted um, as an option rather than to have the cascade. Um, now, people have mentioned, of course, having the cascade be more fluid. Um, this was the best I could achieve at my skill level at this time. There will be future um, attempts to make these kinds of motions smoother down the road. Uh, but um, for right now, um, I think it's a nice alteration. And of course, if it's um, not desired to have that flicker effect, you can just have them be steady state on and get the nice, uh, bright, powerful waterfall lighting that you have. And one of the things that really made me happy and that I really wanted, and in fact, um, I'm going to, I don't like doing this, but I'm going to pick up the camera and move it in just a little bit. Uh, let's see, that's the most I can zoom. Oh. Oh, I don't have to move the camera. You can see that that light is really nice and bright and gives a nice cast on the upside, on the upside, on the roof side of the um, exit from the cliff face. And that was something I really wanted to give that nice glow and uh, make it look a little bit more natural. If I shut off all the lights, I've never done this before actually to take a look. I believe it or not, I've never done this. <laughs> um, there is still a light on behind me, but that gives you a really good look of the effect that is possible, even a nice little glow on the side there, and um, you can see a little glow in the pit at the bottom as well. So um, playing in some dim light I think is going to really reward this um, section visually uh, much more so, and um, I was really pleased overall with how it came out, although it was quite a journey to um, manage the LEDs in here. Still a few problems, could have done it a little bit better, um, but overall really pleased with it. So um, that gives you a look at all of the lighting effects in the uh, Cliff Project and um, how they're controlled, um, what kinds of batteries were utilized to get these effects, and uh, some of the trials and tribulations I had uh, throughout. So that gives you a look at all of the 
facets of what I've been working on to accentuate the cliff project. Um, it's been a long journey, not only for the actual work itself, but for the learning that I put into it. Um, and um, some of the aspects that I haven't even discussed, like the programmable chips and the coding that goes into that and starting out with Arduino board. If you've been following my videos from way, I can't even do the way back finger, the way back videos, um, you know, you know where I've started and hopefully have seen, you know, the progress that I've gotten to, which is not to say I don't have a lot more that I'd like to learn. The ability to control the transistors and the capacitors in the circuit um, opens up a lot more options and I'd like to be able to run uh, more, uh, you know, um, more variations of lighting down the road and so in any case um, it's it's been a journey really enjoyed it I think it's put a whole new uh, palette of skills on the table for me um, so expect to see lighting come up in future projects at any time I can squeeze them in I plan on squeezing them in so um, hopefully you've enjoyed the journey um, along with me and I uh, just want to thank you for um, joining me and, and all the support from all my viewers and of course from the customer as well. Um, it's uh, been a unique project and I really appreciate um, all of the support and encouragement that I've gotten from the community. So a genuine thank you for that. Um, and as I mentioned before in the last video, and I won't reiterate it too much, but um, keep your eye on the channel. Definitely more videos coming out pretty soon um, on a variety of topics. So uh, hopefully you'll come back and join me then.